Uh, we will now hear about a, a showcase of a transatlantic research and development project uh, within the marine environment. Um, and uh, the, the presenter uh, is uh, Mr. Peter, uh, Professor uh, Peter Rines from Cambridge Univer uh, University, no, sorry, from the University of uh, Washington um, in Seattle, USA. Um, and he has come to this conference to give this presentation. And Peter, I'm extremely pleased that you uh, had time to come here. Um, and uh, I think in order to, to get started soon, so please, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I'm very pleased to be here and uh, also honored to have been invited to uh, come this way from Seattle to join you. I've, uh, it's not my first time in the Faroe Islands, and I uh, must say I enjoy it very, very much here. Um, this is uh, back to some science, I think, for, but a specific example of collaborations which uh, between our various groups in the University of Washington in Seattle and uh, work here in the Faroe East Fisheries Laboratory and also closely related institutions in Bergen and in Nuuk. Um, so we start global. Um, this is the, these are weather patterns over the northern hemisphere and Greenland is here. Faroes are just a little dot there, but there you, the blue is the low pressure storms moving up the Atlantic storm track and emphasizing for you the chaotic intensity of the weather which you know well here, but it's good to know how, where it comes from. It comes from us. <laughs> and it actually originates in the Pacific. But the, the, um, there's a, the, uh, the atmosphere is a great integrator of the climate system. It makes uh, couples large global scales with local small scales. And uh, that's a context for what I talk about today. The, uh, I'd like to talk about networking of technology, ideas, physical environment, and people. And uh, in, in, the, in the, my base science is climate research uh, and oceanography in the physical sense, but we really do believe that we are there in the service of the biosphere. The, the integrity of the biosphere is what uh, many, many sciences, uh, the end game of many of the sciences that we have uh, in physics and chemistry. But climate itself is a global network, and uh, so why not climate science? Um, this is a high latitude network that I'd like to talk about a little bit from S Seattle. It's not, um, we don't, I don't mean to be uh, selfishly pointing to my own uh, city, except that it is the sister, sister city of Bergen. Uh, but uh, from, for this is our, speaking of our own personal experience, we're interacting with the Canadians, with Greenlanders, with uh, not so much with Iceland yet, but there's something we really want to do, with Faroes, with Norway. Uh, Svalbard, where Eunice is located, the University of the North. Uh, we hope in the future with Scotland, and we, we interact strongly with uh, England. I'm sorry, Copenhagen and Denmark is not on here. It's, it's pure oversight. Um, but I'd like to describe some connections that have flowed back and forth through these pipes. Scientific discovery, technology, students and postdocs. And I'm going to emphasize education, students, and postdoctorals, because they really are the... Uh, I wouldn't say foot soldiers, that's not a very good word these days, but uh, the, uh, the mechanism for the really hard and important work is often uh, led in a very significant way by, by our youngest people. What really links our climate research efforts together? As I say, students in teaching, um, when you finally have to teach something, you begin to understand it. Joint funding initiatives, certainly. Common belief in the mission, certainly. and. Uh, a very strong uh, circle I would draw around joint work in the field. I mean the, f the outdoors, the, the ocean surface, the atmosphere, the ice fields uh, on ships, on difficult circumstances where you come to rely on people and you come to trust them more, I think, than when you're sitting in a university faculty fighting about uh, parking spaces. Sometimes it's, uh, these linkages come through international mega projects that link us together CLIVAR, C-L-I-V-A-R, is the biggest uh, global climate program, and these are all offshoots of, uh, of CLIVAR in a way, uh, spanning various parts of the climate system. Uh, one in particular which has drawn us together with the Faroes and with Bergen is uh, ASOF, the Arctic Subarctic Ocean Flux Program. We've just published a book 
uh, with 101 authors, I believe. Bob Dixon is the, very much the engine behind uh, the organization and founding of ASOF, and we hope it will keep going. It's the rim of the Arctic asserting itself as a scientific entity in the, in the physics of climate, and we believe it also will now uh, join with um, other rim of the Arctic efforts which address ecosystems and even perhaps beyond. But this kind of work is often built on much smaller transatlantic collaborations. Uh, in this same network, um, I'd like to first start and just show an example from our earlier, early, uh, some connections we have with the Natur Institute in Nuuk, which you heard from, uh, from Helle Siegstadt this morning. And uh, this is not my work, but I just want to show because it's so appropriate this is the narwhal, the uh, legendary or origin of the legendary unicorn, and these are hunters in uh, Greenland. And Dr. Kristen Lydra of University of Washington, our Polar Sciences Center, tags narwhal in Baffin Bay. She uh, working from the beach and working with native hunters uh, in small boats, uh, tags them with Argos satellite beacons. And so this is another, uh, this is an, a wonderful example of the connection of the local and the global, using, and, the, and the highest of technologies, really, satellite beacons being um, placed on the narwhal and their migration uh, histories and, and uh, migration routes and population densities being tracked. These are their summering locations on, ba on the uh, coast of Baffin Island and west coast of Greenland and their wintering locations down further south, uh, almost to Davis Strait here, or in Davis Strait. But Davis Strait is uh, almost ice covered in winter, and th these are mammals who have to breathe, and so they have to stay in very precarious leads. And you can, if you've worked in the Arctic at all, you know how leads can open and shut. It's miraculous that they would choose to be here. But they're here because of Greenland halibut, which is uh, who populate the deep ocean and are a very good meal. This is uh, Kristen Lydra's uh, image from uh, the narwhal wintering grounds in uh, 2006.